So welcome back to our next tutorial in which we'll be discussing the next operation. Now this is pretty amazing. We're going to go to setup and we are going to right here, click a new setup. Okay, so for our stock, this is what the option is that comes up from preceding setup. We want the stock to remain the same from our previous setup and to update uh, as it has just been cut in setup one. So we're going to continue rest machining as well. Post process, let's keep our work offset. Well, work offset would be in this instance, G55. And again, we're not talking about advanced fixturing and using subplates and things like this, which use a standard and common work coordinate system. We're just picking something simple for you for this tutorial. We'll have something better in the future for uh, creating a, a common work coordinate system. Anyways, uh, that's a little too much for this tutorial at this time. So for our work coordinate system, we're going to, instead of pick our stock box point, we're going to pick our model box point, and we're probably going to pick something down here. Now this is in line with this face as our datum, and this face is our datum, and the bottom of our model is our datum. It's not related to our stock anymore because our stock doesn't exist on that uh, the, on the bottom of our model in this view. Okay, so this is looking great. Our Z direction is perfect, our X and Y. Everything's looking great. Now, this will not happen to you. Um, the reason is we're just going to get rid of this right here. This is going to be on your fusion uh, design, on your, on your manufacturing workspace right now. So what you're going to do is when you click on setup one, it's going to orient it because this is how we insert our model into uh, the manufacturer, the design workspace. Top is up, but look what happens when we click on setup two. Top is still up, but we want to actually look at it. Oh, sorry, we've got this vice versa. That's right. This is correct for setup two. Setup one, Ah, you see our work coordinate system is flipped the other way. So this is the secret, everyone. Synchronize view with active setup, visibility with active setup, and view cube. So did you see our view cube just flipped? Right now we're looking at our bottom face. That's how we inserted the part. But we want to sync view with active setup. Right now, setup one, this should be our top face. There we go. So our view cube has been synced. As soon as we click on setup two, it flips the part around and everything is set up good for us to go. Our stock looks great. It's been machined out already. Our holes have been machined already. So we can proceed with setup number two. So there's a number of different ways to do this. Most uh, programmers out there, they'll think, oh, this is definitely a 3D part. I'm going to use a 3D toolpath because 3D is better than 2D, right? I mean, it's 2D plus one. Well, adaptive clearing is probably what you're going to pick. We're going to select our tool, half inch end mill, and I'm going to show you that that thinking is not correct all the time. If we've got various levels and various steps, I'm going to prove to you that adaptive 3D adaptive clearing is not the right option. So geometry, let's pick our geometry here. We're going to Actually, for a geometry, we don't even need to pick anything. It will do it for us. Our heights, our bottom height, we don't want it to go all the way to the model because we're going to be holding on with a vise. So let's select this as our bottom. Our passes optimal load is going to be 0.1, and let's press Enter. Okay, so this looks, hey, this actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? Ah, so we think. Let's go simulate. And let's see all of the different issues that we have here. All right, so it's whipping around. Great, so this, this level that it's machining right now is actually looking pretty good. But look at all the cuts over here. This material is already removed. And our tool wants to cut that, all, those, all that material away. What it, the material is not there, so it's going to be wasting it. And look at what it's doing up at the top here. It's a little disastrous. Okay, there we go. Look at all that wasted time. Okay, anyways, this is too much. This is too much to bear. So let's just go to 3D or this adaptive toolpath and see if we can adjust something real quick here. Um, we could reduce air cutting if we want. 
Uh, let's see what that looks like. All right, so it kind of recognizes it, but all of this at the top there, you know, it's done a little bit better job, but we could do it an even better job there. Let's go to our tolerance. We're going to add a little bit more there. Optimal load. Let's just bring it to 0.15. Let's slowly refine our tool path here. There we go. Hey, you know what? That's actually looking not too, too, too bad. But let's pick a better way here. I'm going to delete it. And let's pick our 2D adaptive clearing. We're going to go back to our half inch end mill. And for our geometry, we are going to just pick, and you can see the blue level right here, or the blue plane showing the material that's going to be removed, and here as well. So that is going to be removed right there. That is great considering the stock as well. Our heights, now we picked this contour, that contour, and this. We could actually pick for our bottom height selected contours because those were the exact uh, contours on the exact planes that we wanted to machine them on. And it's smart. It will understand that this contour is on one plane, this contour is on the same plane, and this is on a different plane. You can also see that the first two are closed and the last is an open chain. Perfect. Let's go to passes, optimal load. Let's go to 0.15 there. Great stock to leave. Let's pick uh, 10 thou for our radial, 10 thou for our axial, and let's go OK. Now, this is a beautiful looking pass right there. The only difference is, is we have lots of retracts. So again, we're going to go to our tool path, go to linking. Instead of full retraction, minimum. This is just a, a little bit of a warning for you while you're programming. Uh, don't always pick minimum retraction exercise discernment, I should say, when you are switching this from minimum to full or full to minimum. Um, this is just to educate you on different tool paths. So just let the, let the machinist, let the programmer beware. Okay, now look at this tool path. It's beautiful. Very few wasted cuts. Let's hit OK. Look at that, it's great. So click on the top right of your screen to watch the next tutorial. See you then.